Hi, John Dick here, philanthropist, urging you to save the noble lemming. Okay, now that we've sorted out the important stuff, let's talk about wetness in scum. Now, before you just go and wet yourself, there's a few things you should know. So, I'm gonna jump right into this video blog. So, what's different between scum and other survival games when it comes to getting wet? Let me explain it by examining this sharp-dressed young man. It's easy to see that he's fully capable of surviving almost anything that nature can throw at him. The secret of his success is multiple layers of clothing that scum supports. Each piece of cloth has important properties like heat insulation, armor, inventory slots, and finally, there's a wetness property. All of these parameters are defined by material, meaning that a flannel shirt will perform differently than a leather jacket. As you can see from the inventory perspective, there are groups of layers per body region. The top group is assigned to the character's head, the middle one covers the torso area, while the bottom part is for legs and feet. By stacking layers of clothing, you combine their parameters in the same way you would do in real life. When it comes to layered clothing, your grandma was right. It helps you to adapt to any weather condition possible. So how can you get wet in the game? The most obvious way is by sweating. While performing tasks, the body will heat up. In an attempt to cool you down, the body responds with perspiration. This kind of moisture is propagated from the inside out and also causes additional fluid loss or dehydration. The next way is the impact of the weather. To avoid getting wet in rain, try to find a dry spot fast or wear at least some water-resistant gear. Being drenched in the rain during cold weather will impact immune system and your character will probably get sick. In the following example, you can see twin brothers on their way to the beach. Adolf on the left is wearing standard military-issued tactical jacket, and Desmond on the right has his all-time favorite olive raincoat. They both have several layers of the same clothes beneath the outer layer. If you take a closer look at the inventory, you might notice that each item has its own weight listed in the top right part of the icon. The same value is also shown with green colored font so that it can be tracked more easily. All other inventory slots are empty because both brothers forgot to take their inflatable swimming arm bins with them to the beach. Luckily for them, they won't drown because the rain will come again, falling on their heads like a memory. As the rain starts to pour down on these poor guys, their clothes will start to absorb the water and become wet. If we speed up the time, you'll be able to see the impact of rain on the different layers of clothing much better. Carefully examine the green numbers. As expected, the tactical jacket gets wet relatively quickly along with a backpack, pants, and shoes. Increasing values in green actually represent the amount of water that has been absorbed by clothes and gear. On the right, Desmond is doing much better. Although his backpack, pants, and shoes are completely drenched, his upper body is dry. For Adolf, things are going from bad to worse. It seems that the tactical jacket waterproof factor isn't as good as advertised and leaks water on his sweater and shirt, making him completely wet. Furthermore, as Adolf's clothes are getting wet, they're also getting heavier, meaning that he'll be carrying an additional 13 plus ounces of weight all the way back home. This will certainly affect his calorie consumption during that trip and his performance will suffer as well. In scum, moisture absorption and retention depends on the material that's being used for clothing. Let's bring out the sunshine again. Do notice that both guys were standing completely still in heavy rain just because we asked them nicely. These guys are true heroes. Now, it's time to see what happened with the inner layers of clothing. As you can see, Adolf's sweater is all wet while Desmond's is still dry. If we drop the sweaters down, you can see that the same thing also happened to their hipster shirts. In the previous part of the video, you might have noticed that different parts of the clothing can absorb or retain different percentages of water. As in real life, some parts of the body can become wetter than others. In scum, we handle wetness per body part along with separate layers of clothes that can have different wetness values also. This means that parts of your gear can be dry or wet depending on what you do. Body parts that are covered separately are feet, legs, torso, hands, and head. If you're standing in the water up to your waistline, then only your legs and feet will be wet. 
the rest of your body will stay dry. Also, if you jump into the water, your gear will almost instantly become fully wet, even if you have a raincoat or some other water-resistant clothing that isn't fully sealed, it will not help you to stay dry. The success formula here is, if you want to keep your gear dry, stay away from the bodies of water, or at least drop everything to the ground before you enter. In this section of the video, our guy has just practiced some swimming in the shallow waters, keeping his gear with him to protect it from thieves and bears. He did leave an old orange shirt on the beach, in case he's gonna need some dry clothes later. Or at least, that's what we were thinking he was up to. However, his plan was much more sinister. He actually decided to wear a dry shirt below his other clothes with the intention to deceive the game, to make it think that he has dry clothes on, simply because the first dry clothing layer is closest to the skin. In all other games, this would be called exploiting or cheating. But here in Scum, we don't care about that, simply because we have fluid diffusion and osmosis built into the game. For those of you who don't know, diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration, meaning that his dry orange t-shirt will soon become a wet orange t-shirt. After everything you've seen so far, if you still think that it's okay to jump into deep water with all your gear on, take a moment to see what happened to our dear Adolf last year. That particular summer day, he was showing off at the pier, he accidentally fell into the water along with his traveling backpack on his back. To make things even worse, the backpack was full of his mother's lingerie. The next thing you know, all that stuff simply pulled him directly to the bottom. The only way to survive in this kind of situation is to drop excessive weight until the buoyancy pulls you up. The amount of gear that your character can carry while swimming largely depends on your swimming skill and stamina. Sooner or later, you'll become tired and most likely, you'll sink. It's as simple as that. Now, let's talk about ways of drying your stuff off once it becomes wet. The easiest way to dry your clothes is by using the heat of your body in combination with the air temperature and wind. This is particularly useful during the summer when wet clothes keep you cool and safe from the excessive sweating and dehydration. Also, it's good to know that if you keep moving, your body will get warmer and you'll dry your clothes faster. In the current example, you can see that simply by standing in the sunlight, you can dry your gear. Also, you can see that the helmet has dried much faster than the backpack because they're different materials. In the situations where air temperature is low, you can use heat sources to dry your clothes. How fast something will dry depends on many factors, such as the material type. Items that conduct heat better will be dried faster. The amount of water absorbed. If more water is absorbed, it takes more time for clothes to dry. Relative humidity. If humidity in the air is high, drying gets slower and dry clothes can even get wet. Wind helps a lot in drying by carrying the water vapor away, preventing any concentration of moisture on the clothes. Air temperature, higher temperatures will help to dry clothes faster. Then the number of wet layers stacked. Keeping wet clothing stacked on you is bad and it slows down the drying time significantly. In the current example, the player is using fire as a heat source to dry his clothes. Notice how the distance from the fire source influences the speed of his drying clothes. While the shirt, being closest to the fire, is almost dry, a jock jacket is a bit damp. On the other hand, pants that were on the character the whole time are still fully wet since they were far away from the heat source. To reduce drying time, keep your wet clothes spread near the heat source. Also, if you don't have any spare dry clothes, make sure not to freeze to death while waiting for your clothes to dry. 
Okay, for now, this is more or less everything you need to know about wetting yourself in scum. All that you've seen is still a work in progress and is subject to change. In the future, we plan to improve things even more, add some new ways of getting wet, but you can also find your own ways by being a creative player. We hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to follow Scum on Steam, Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog, www.scumgame.com. Hi, my name's uh, John Dick, and this is the first Q&A scum video. Uh, hopefully not the last one. Uh, it seems that our last scat video made some noise, and uh, we kind of felt that some of the features needed to be explained better. So let's address the biggest issue of them all, and that's... The wall hack issue. Uh, before we start on that, we have to go back 30 years, uh, back to a time... When games were more hardcore, developers were more honest and trustworthy, and players, well, players were great. They're always great. But uh, back then, graphics were less awesome, and the overall realism look and feel was a lot simpler than it was today. With time, gamers have embraced certain standards, and although many of those things don't exist in real life, uh, it's normal to have a health bar as an indication of your health status, blood stains, or a grayscale effect when you get wounded. Uh, it's okay to have crosshairs also, uh, especially because it's difficult to aim in a 3D world rendered on 2D screens. W without these elements, the gaming experience will not be as enjoyable as it is. And why are things like that? Well, the answer is pretty simple. When in real life, we have basic senses, a gut sense, and some have a sense of humor also. In games, we're limited to only visual and sounds. So if you want to simulate them, they have to be either rendered or played as sounds. Uh, in Scum, we simulate what characters see, hear, and feel in general, and then send that information to players that control them. Uh, here's where the body control unit kicks in. Uh, before we started to work on Scum, we talked about the realism and how it's presented in survival games today. If you take a minimal approach, then your character might die without any obvious reason. One minute, you're a happy character just running around doing your thing, and the next minute, you're a corpse. Uh, in real life, before you die, your body will send warning signals like pain, discomfort, sometimes months before bad things happen. Scum isn't just a game, it's a universe. Prisoners are implanted with BCUs that track them and can broadcast video for prisoners' eyes directly to live TV. Uh, BCUs are connected to the character's spinal cord, they can collect subjects' health status, affect the hormone levels, even take control of the character if necessary. They can also render data in front of the character's eyes. And once the BCU is removed, a HUD will be significantly reduced or removed. With BCUs, all prisoners are connected in one huge hive. The second thing we have to address are human eyes and how they work. In short, our eyes have central and peripheral vision that can't be simulated in computer games. Uh, for both eyes combined, horizontal field of view is between 200 and 220 degrees, while central vision is only about 5 degrees in the center. Visual acuity declines by about 50% every 2.5 degrees from the center up to about 30 degrees, at which point visual acuity declines even more steeply. If we try to simulate this on a computer screen, it would look something like this. The central vision helps to focus straight ahead to see details sharply, and peripheral vision is used for detecting motion. While the central vision is good at various distances, the peripheral is good for large or close objects. The loss of peripheral vision while retaining central vision is known as tunnel vision. Scum simulates what your character sees by projecting imaginary curves. Everything in those curves can be detected by the tactics skill. For distant objects, players will have to use only a small fraction of the vision to keep their target in focus. You can see that curves are set in a way that characters can detect bigger, closer, or moving objects with ease. In combination with the awareness skill, this curve is also used when rendering camouflaged enemies at a close range. Here's an experimental feature that we've added for the focus mode. By using the right mouse button to enter the focus mode, players will gain a slight magnification of the view, but they'll lose some part of their peripheral vision. So let's talk about the wall, ha um, I mean tactics skill, finally. 
So right now, you have at least some general idea what variables are taken into consideration when tactics are being calculated. There's no way tactics will highlight every single target on the screen, and in most cases it will be effective only if you can focus directly on the target. Time of tactics skill is significantly reduced compared to what you've seen in the last video, which was more of an example than something that will or can be used in the game. Uh, furthermore, to keep tactics working, you'll have to follow your target all the time, meaning that you probably won't be able to focus on anything else. The moment you lose track of your target, tactics will be turned off. Also, we've replaced the infamous outline with something more like a fading blob contour. That fits much better for this purpose. If you've seen the movie Gamer, the players take full control of the human being in full-scale combat. In Scum, it's similar. You, as a player, live in symbiosis with the host, your prisoner. Instead of having an avatar, like in other games, you're actually controlling a living person. It's all part of the show. The most important thing to remember is, no matter the camera position, we don't render anything that your characters don't detect. Because all skills in Scum are somewhat connected, there's one more thing worth mentioning. The speed of entry into focus mode depends on awareness skill level. This means that if your target is moving fast, low skill level characters will not be able to zoom fast enough to lock the target before it disappears behind the obstacle. In the game, there will be around 30 different skills you'll be able to assign to your character. Some of the skills will be available at the release date, uh, others will be added during the early access. Even if you don't assign some skills during the character creation process, they can be learned later in the game. When we present stuff in the development blog videos, all the skills are on advanced levels and they look powerful. And that's the point of advanced skills, the main area of expertise of your convict. The bad news is that investing too many points in this specific skill will make your other skills weak. It'll be up to you to choose what your host has learned before he became the prisoner. So choose wisely. All right, it's time for a little Q&A. Um, first question is, what happens when you die? Well, your soul is sucked into the eternal void and you spend an agonizing... Oh, wait, you mean uh, in the game. Okay. Well, in the game when you die, it depends on how famous you are. If you've collected enough fame points, you can spend them to get resurrected in the game. If not, your character will be lost. But you can start with a new one, of course. Uh, this system will be available after early access, probably. Or the early access version of the fame points will be simplified. Uh, still working on it. Uh, how long does a game session last? Uh, this one can't be answered easily. Uh, Scum will have three different layers of gameplay, or we can call them entry levels. Uh, some of them will have short sessions, like 20-30 uh, minute tops, while others will have sessions that will take hundreds of hours. It all depends on how players would prefer to play the game. Uh, we'll talk later about these different layers of gameplay. Uh, question number three. What are some ways to balance the servers depending on the skills of the players? That's a very good question. Uh, Scum will not have classic random played sessions as uh, Battle Royale games have. Because of how Scum is designed with different gameplay layers, it's almost impossible to make matchmaking. So we'd rather go in the direction of making a new system of rewards where low-skilled players are worth less than high-skilled players. Um, or, in other words, the more famous players. Uh, that way we can create a pressure reward system that works well for both types of players. Uh, question number four, will there be a map? And if so, will it have markers? Uh, we're not sure if players will have access to a map at the beginning. But if we have to answer something right now, it would probably be no. Uh, for some TV show events, players will be able to use temporary maps that will be uploaded to their BCUs. Uh, question number five, when is it coming out? Uh, the release date is currently set in the first quarter of 2018. So not that far away. Get good fast, scrub. You're going to be tested. Question number six. Will Scum be difficult to play? Scum has a low entry level, and it can be played by pretty much anyone. Except your mom, because she doesn't have skill. Question number seven. How will you handle hackers? Uh, right now, the plan is to use the easy anti-cheat service. And question number eight, finally. How many players per server? 
Uh, we're targeting 64 plus players per server, so plenty of room for everyone. Uh, thank you for watching this Q&A. Bear in mind that everything you saw here is a work in progress and is subject to change. We plan to test out all the features, and if some of them turn out to be overpowered, they'll be adjusted or removed from the game. We appreciate your feedback, as always, and look forward to playing Scum with you in the near future. Hi, my name's John Dick, and in this development blog video, we'll cover four different skill sets. Stealth, Camouflage, Awareness, and Tactics. These skills dynamically change depending on external influences or choices you make with your character during game time. Before we start with the scat video, we'd like to say something about the unfair advantage of third-person perspective over first-person perspective. In the current video, we've recreated the worst-case scenario that players can experience in all third-person shooting games today. Not only that TPP is unfair over FPP, it's unfair in general since players on elevated positions have a huge advantage over other players. So far, there's no game that has provided a solution for this problem. Some games do offer split servers depending on the view, but in our opinion, that's kinda lame. So, what exactly did we do to make things better? In Scum, everything you experience is a projection of what your character experiences in the game. No matter which view you prefer, you will not be able to see things if your character doesn't see them or feel them. This means if you want to see behind the wall, you'll have to take a peek and risk compromising your position. The moment you take a look, your character's awareness will kick in. What will be shown to you on the screen is a result of complex equations that involve your character's awareness and tactic skill versus the enemy's stealth and camouflage skills. The red outlines representing that tactic skill have been activated also. Notice that it works for both first-person and third-person perspective. Once tactics time expires, you'll lose information about the enemy's position. The only way to get it again is to take another look. Okay, let's cover the tactics skill first. Tactics is linked with the intelligence attribute and represents the ability to predict trajectories of objects in 3D space. Imagine you're looking through the window and notice a car slowing down at the crossroad with a left turn signal turned on. Even if you stop looking at that car, you'll have a rough idea about its trajectory. In the video, the character on the right has advanced level in tactics and is able to track its target much longer than the character on the left. Remember, tactics will not work if your target is in peripheral vision. It works only for central vision. Here you can see three players with two different awareness skill levels. While the first and third one are observing the surroundings more casually, the soldier in the middle has activated focus mode by holding down the right mouse button. The enemy soldier with the activated camouflage is sneaking directly towards them. The first character is what we call a trained observer. He has advanced awareness skill level and will notice the enemy almost immediately once he leaves the cover. The middle one with the activated focus mode will notice the enemy a bit later. By being focused, your character is paying more attention and that will give you a bonus to awareness's hotspot radius. The third soldier is the last to notice the enemy. As you train your characters to observe, hotspot radius will increase. Awareness skill will determine what is rendered and what isn't. And even if things are rendered, that doesn't mean that it will be easy to notice them. Well camouflaged snipers can totally blend in with surroundings and become almost invisible. So if focus mode is so great with the bonus multiplier, why shouldn't you use it all the time? The character on the right is using focus mode to observe the surroundings while jogging through the level. His stamina is dropping slightly faster than the stamina of the character on the left. The influence of the focus mode is really small, but still, if you combine all the other factors that impact your character's performance, it may be crucial in life and death situations. Awareness is defined by two factors, hotspot radius and falloff radius. If the camouflaged objects are farther away and out of falloff radius, your character will not be able to see them, unless he has some sort of magnification, for example, a sniper rifle. All magnifying devices automatically add bonuses to hotspot and falloff making it easier for you to notice things at higher distances. Looking through the scope also automatically activates the focus mode. Awareness is not only useful in combat situations, it also provides you with benefits when you're searching for useful items like food or gear. If you use focus mode, awareness will highlight the items within your spot radius. This will help you to see them from a distance, which is especially useful for smaller items. Characters with low awareness skill will have to come closer to detect the same items. During the nighttime, awareness spot radius is significantly reduced. Unless you find some kind of night vision device, you'll not be able to detect things with the same efficiency as during the day. 
A higher level of awareness will give you some additional benefits, such as the ability to detect imminent dangers. It won't work 100% of the time, but when you get notified, be sure to react swiftly or you may lose your life. Okay, let's cover the stealth skill now. The stealth skill is linked with the dexterity attribute, but it also depends on other factors. To determine the final level of noise that your character makes, we first analyze the type and amount of gear your character carries. Then we take into consideration the movement and ground material type. This is the starting point of the noise level calculations. The next step is to factor in the overall weight of the character. Again, this system is fully dynamic and it's linked directly with the character's metabolism. All things that influence body mass are taken into consideration, like fluid or food intake, for example. The larger the body, the more noise it will make. Finally, the last thing taken into consideration is actual stealth skill level. The higher the skill, the better you silence the noise that your character makes. Modern gaming engines have many limitations. Don't you simply hate when you think that you're safely hidden far away in dense foliage just to realize that you stick out like a dog's balls? In Scum, our methods allow players to be equally competitive regardless of the graphical settings they use to play the game. The guy at camp is preparing some delicious beans. Let's call him Donald. Three soldiers are approaching him over the hill. The left one, called Huey, is crawling through dense vegetation. The middle one, Dewey, is crouching his way towards the larger bush. And the right one is simply walking straight in the open like John Wayne in Sands of Iwo Jima. Let's address him as Louie. Notice that from the Donald's perspective, he only sees Louie. Dewey is well hidden in the bush, while Huey can't be seen because he's well camouflaged. On far distances, the game engine doesn't render foliage, Yet still, Huey is invisible until he decides to blow his cover simply by changing his stance. At that moment, his camouflage has been terminated and he becomes visible. The camouflage skill can only be activated in dense foliage when your character is prone and out of plain sight. Everything you just saw is still in development, but in short, these were the basics of scat skills. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog at www.scumgame.com. By the way, did you notice all seven people in this scene? No? Congratulations! You just got wasted. Get good, scrub. Don't forget to check out our other scum videos for more features and general badassery. We'll see you next time. Hi, my name's John Dick, here to explain how rifle and sniping skills work in Scum. Scum is an open-world survival game with a realistic approach to gameplay. In Scum, you'll be able to create unique characters with different attributes and skill sets. The rifles skill is inherited from the strength attribute, which generally defines everything related to muscle power. Sniping is linked to intelligence. Although both these skills require weapons, the former covers weapon handling, short distance shooting, movement with weapons, and weapon maintenance, while the latter covers expertise in long range shooting. The first thing we'll cover are the various stances and their relation to crosshair size. As with other combat games, crosshair size defines the scatter radius. This works in Scum just as it works in other games. What's different in Scum, however, are the additional factors that influence the size of the scatter radius. The most important factor is skill level. The rifle's skill is inherited from the strength attribute, which generally defines everything related to muscle power. If you want to be a good rifleman, you simply invest points in strength. Higher strength means better recoil control. The caliber of the bullet also influences weapon recoil. Stamina is another factor. 
If the characters are exhausted, ill, wounded, or drugged, their ability to handle weapons will be reduced. The amount of stamina, overall body condition, and metabolism processes depend largely on the constitution attribute. This means that even though the rifle skill is linked to the strength attribute, it also depends on other body attributes. After all, human bodies are complex machines. Scatter radius is significantly reduced when the player aims down the sight. Previous factors still apply, but since the player holds the weapon firmly and aims down the sight, the recoil is reduced and shot groupings are tighter. When aiming down the sight, you may hold your breath, which is extremely useful in single fire mode. Holding breath is just as beneficial for rifles and the sniping skill, and it'll help you make more precise consecutive shots. While inexperienced characters can place only one or two bullets in the target, skilled riflemen can hold their breath longer and place up to ten shots before they lose their breath. The breath holding function is divided into three parts, taking a breath, holding it, and releasing it. These all depend on the skill level and will define the final aiming noise. Other factors from the scatter radius are also taken into consideration when the aiming noise is being calculated. Finally, every time you fire a weapon, it recoils and returns back to center. This is a skill link parameter as well. The better the skill, the closer to the center the weapon will return. In most games, a simple recoil procedure is used, forcing the player to return the weapon to the center manually. If you fire three or four consecutive shots, you'll be holding the weapon straight up in the air. And that's kind of lame, don't you think? In the current scene, you can see two different characters with different stats. The character on the left is a slim person with below average strength attribute and maximum dexterity. The character on the right is suffering from accumulated fatigue and disease. Because of this, his strength attribute has been temporarily reduced. His rifle skill has been influenced by a strength drop and thus has been reduced from advanced to basic. This is actually a representation of how metabolism and external factors influence your character in the game. Now let's see what happens when these two guys meet. Nice! Now let's talk about the sniping skill. The sniping skill is weighted with the intelligence attribute and you need a weapon and a scope for sniping. To mount a scope on the weapon, you'll first have to mount a rail. Also, you can mount numerous different scopes on a weapon with an attached rail. The first time you mount the scope, you'll have to calibrate it. The rifle scope calibration is called zeroing. At the moment, SCUM supports a simple zeroing procedure, but we can make it fully realistic if this is what you desire. To zero your weapon, find a target at a certain distance, for example, a target set 100 meters away. Set your zero value to 100 meters and fire one round at the very center of the target. Check where the shot went and adjust the windage factor. Repeat the process until you get your shots perfectly centered. One windage click equals one milladot marker. In case you drop your weapon or it gets damaged, you'll probably have to repeat its zeroing. For the bullet trajectory, we use G1 ballistic formulas. In SCUM, the bullet's trajectory is influenced by caliber, ballistic coefficient, wind, temperature, humidity, air pressure, altitude, and, of course, gravity. Most of these values are on the left. Once you find your target, first you need to estimate all the mentioned parameters. By quickly pressing the control key, your character will start to calculate everything. This calculation will take a long time for an inexperienced character and will not provide you with precise results. We refer to this action as ranging a target. Once you determine the range, you can adjust zero value or aim at a specific chevron marker. The current scope is factory adjusted for SVD, but it can be used for all other weapons as well. However, chevrons will only work for SVD since they have been calibrated for SVD's standard ammunition. The SVD scope has a built-in rangefinder that enables you to quickly estimate a target's distance, too. When you develop more skill, you'll be able to range targets faster and with more precision, which is crucial if you need to kill your target quickly. A skillful sniper will be able to engage more targets at different distances than an inexperienced one. Furthermore, the skill also defines how far the sniper can range targets. As you gather experience points, your character's sniping skill grows, and in time, your target ranging distances will improve. It's understandable that there's no such thing as an innate ability to determine the exact ranging values. The currently shown values are for testing purposes only. We can replace them with descriptions like low, medium, or high humidity, for example, or leave them as they are depending on what the community wants. In the future, temperature, humidity, and pressure will be linked to a survival skill and shown accordingly depending on the skill level.
In the current example, the sniper engages multiple moving targets. The first two targets move at a walking pace, the second two move at a jogging speed, and the last one, set a thousand meters away, moves at an average running speed. Please do notice that the sniper isn't even trying to hold his breath for the first few shots. As it's difficult to range moving targets set more than 600 meters away, it's smart to aim at the bottom of the target or to use a static object near the target to get the reading. A skillful sniper will be able to use mill dots to hit targets moving at different distances. For the really distant targets, the player can use the windage knob adjustment to set up the aiming at a specific mill dot. Take your time, breathe, you got this. Any day now. Nice shot. Here, the sniper has changed his location and obtained an elevated position. Higher positions provide snipers with a better overview of the situation. However, shooting from higher altitudes at the targets located below has an impact on the bullet's trajectories, especially when the air pressure changes depending on the altitude. This is mostly noticeable in the case of distant targets. Now let's see what happens when the weather changes. The wind is a powerful force that can change the bullet trajectory easily. Even with targets set 100 meters away, a strong side wind can shift the bullet sideways by 10 to 20 centimeters. If you're not good at locating the north in order to determine the wind direction, then check for obvious signs. Check how the trees are moving, where the leaves are being blown away to, or which direction the rain is falling if it's raining. To shoot targets in strong wind, you'll have to learn how to use the windage knob. A skillful sniper can hit a target with one of the first three bullets. In this short clip, you can see different weapons using the same type of scope. Notice how the SVD has a stronger bullet than the AK. The SVD's kickback is more powerful, and the AK can't even reach the target by aiming at the same chevron. Now, let's see how all this actually works in the game itself. These have been the very basics about the rifles and sniping skills. Naturally, we plan to improve things even more and add many new features as well. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog at scumgame.com. No rabbits were harmed during the recording of this video blog presentation.
Hi, my name's John Dick, and I'm here to explain to you how unarmed combat works in SCUM. Without further ado, let's get started. The unarmed combat and brawling has four different skill levels of expertise that the players can reach, starting from no skill level up to advanced skill level. However, the character's skill is just one of many things that are taken into consideration when combat begins. The other important factors are the player's ability to control his character during the combat and the physical condition of his character. Now that you know the basics, let's take a look at how the combat system works in other modern survival games. For this, we created a simulation of the type of unarmed combat that you can find in practically every survival game available on Steam. From what you can see here, the character is constrained at the hip but you can tilt their upper body and throw random punches toward your opponent. The camera is locked behind the character, it doesn't provide the player with a good overview of the situation, and most of the time it's really hard to tell where the punch will land. Obviously, this is a very basic implementation, and we could have done it the same in Scum, but we wanted to make something different. So, what exactly did we do in Scum to make things better? First, we wanted to find out the best way to fit martial arts in Scum's gameplay mechanics, and we quickly realized that the angle of the camera has to be changed. The free camera view not only provides players with a better overview of the situation, it also helps when you have to engage multiple opponents at the same time. The game also provides a first-person perspective camera for the combat mode, and everything works well there, too. Once you enter combat, you'll be able to perform different moves and attacks. For example, you can try to circle around your opponent and control the fight from a distance. During the combat, you can defend yourself or attack. From defensive moves, you can use block or dodge. And from the attacks, you can choose kicks, punches, and combo moves. A dodge is used when you want to outmaneuver your opponent and then strike back in a counterattack with a different combination of punches and kicks. With the left mouse button, you can perform punches. With the right mouse button, you can do kicks. Combos are performed by pressing a combination of keys, followed by left or right mouse button, depending on whether you want a punching or kicking combo. The skill level of your character will define types of moves your character will use during the combat. So, for example, he might do a simple jab or a cross. Or, if he's more skillful, then he can step in, close the distance, and use a more powerful punch. Combos are special attack combinations that inflict more damage than a normal punch or kick, but they also drain stamina at a faster rate. The best way to use a combo is against a dodge or a block, and if you perform the combo successfully, you'll increase the chance for a knockout. Along with the skill level, the character's attributes will also influence the outcome of the fight. Strength, constitution, and dexterity are attributes that the player chooses during the character creation process. But, once the game starts, these parameters will gradually change depending on the character's diet, metabolism level, actions players take, and overall health status of the character. That will, of course, be reflected on the character's speed, endurance, and strength during the battle. With proper diet and workout, it's possible to boost all these attributes to their maximum values. The only exception is the intelligence attribute, which will stay the same or drop down if, for example, a character gets shot in the head. In the current presentation, you can see different skill levels and how they will be represented in the game. Our plan is to make different sets of animations for each skill level to allow players to visually recognize the skill levels of their foes. This is still a work in progress, and it will not be included in the early access version of the game. Everything that your character carries in the game will have an impact on how you will perform in the combat. Heavy gear will make your moves slow and sluggish, and it will drain your stamina more quickly. It's recommended that you drop excessive weight before you enter a fight. The combat skill can be effectively used against other players, NPCs, and it can be used against animals too. Although, we do not recommend you attack bigger and more dangerous animals unless, of course, you're sure that you can beat them or outrun them. In short, these were the basics about Scum Unarmed Combat Skill, and everything you saw is still a work in progress. We aim for further optimization of the combat process to make it more fluid and enjoyable. Future plans are to replace mocaps with more realistic animations. 
to make hit reactions for blocks and because our system is modular once everything is set up we plan to include other martial arts as additional combat skills that players will be able to choose. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and if you want to find out more about SCUM be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter or our dev blog on scumgame.com. Yeah! <laughs>